The wheel was invented by the Sumerians in the 4th millennia BCE. Yet here's the Mars rover on Mars with wheels right there and it's just rolling around. But that's not the question. The question is, do we still need data modeling? With modern data architectures, has the Kimball dimensional model for data warehousing become obsolete? The Kimball Data Warehouse is a type of data warehouse architecture that was developed by Ralph Kimball and his team in the late 1980s and early 1990s. It's based on a set of design principles and techniques for building and maintaining data warehouses. And it's become one of the most widely used approaches in the industry. While newer approaches to data warehousing and analytics have emerged over the years, the Kimball methodology is still a solid foundation for building a high-performing data warehouse. One of the key strengths of the Kimball approach is focus on dimensional modeling, which is a way of organizing data into clear and easy to understand structures that make it easier to query and analyze. This is especially important for business users who may not have a technical background, as it allows them to easily understand the data and get the insights they need. In addition, the Kimball methodology emphasizes the importance of building a data warehouse that is easy to maintain and adapt over time. It recognizes that data warehouses are a living system that needs to be constantly updated and improved, and it provides a set of best practices for doing so. The only real alternative to Kimball is the data vault. This method was developed by Dan Lindstedt and is all about building a flexible, scalable, and maintainable data warehouse. The idea behind the data vault is to create a hub and spoke structure. This allows you to easily add new data sources without disrupting the entire structure. One of the big advantages of the data vault method is that it's designed to be easy to modify and adapt as your business or data needs change. It also has built-in controls to ensure that your data is accurate and consistent. And then we have data lakes, which are a little different. They're designed to be more flexible and scalable, allowing you to store all kinds of data in one central location. This includes structured data like that used in a data warehouse, as well as unstructured data like log files and social media posts. On the one hand, having a dimensional model can definitely make it easier to query and analyze your data. It can help you organize your data in a way that makes sense and make it easier for people to understand what's going on. On the other hand, data lakes are designed to be flexible and scalable, and a dimensional model might not always be necessary. If you're just storing data for future use, or you don't have a specific need to analyze the data right away, you might not need a dimensional model at all. So is it still relevant to learn the Kimball dimensional model? Well, if NASA didn't know how to build a wheel, the rover wouldn't have roved very far. Technology tends to be built and innovated on what it came before it. Knowing and understanding the basics can accelerate your abilities with the modern. The first few chapters of the Data Warehouse Toolkit should still be relevant to just about anyone in the field. Even working with data lakes and big data platforms, the basic ability to identify grains of a table and understand how a model may run into issues is going to be expected of anyone. While terminology may shift, knowing the concepts of facts, dimensions, grains, and how it all works together is useful and will likely come up in interviews. Even the activity schema, a time series data warehouse model, is essentially facts, activities, and dimensions, entities. As for some of the more advanced techniques of dimensional modeling, those may vary in value. They were designed for efficiency in a world where data storage and processing was costly. So depending on tools and techniques you're using, you may not need to worry about some of Kimball's recommendations in the later chapters of the toolkit. If you're going with something like the medallion architecture, which is common for data lakes, you'll still likely end up doing some sort of dimensional style modeling for the gold or curated data layer. And this is to help out the reporting teams. There's a few reasons to curate data instead of just pulling from raw data copies. Most source systems don't have historical data, so it's built incrementally in the warehouse. It saves data preparation time for processes that are done repeatedly, and it can avoid silos where each ML project is built on its own big table, so you have projects using inconsistent and repeated data sets. So much like the wheel, the Kimball model just won't go away. It appears in every new modeling technique and modern data architecture you'll come across. So if you want to build the Mars rover, you're going to need to know how to make a wheel. But if you don't want to be stuck in the Stone Age, check out this video on the Data Vault next, so you'll know the next progression in data warehousing data models.